Mr. Uh, yes, uh, Aniza, you're saying something? Yeah, Miss, I was saying that the recording stopped. But you can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Achha, okay, let me check. Is the recording going on? Yeah, Miss, yes, after it said that the recording stopped, then it said the recording is in progress. Achha, okay, fine, fine. Uh, basically, actually, I touched the button. Yeah. Yes, so everything on this earth is living thing, and then you have non living thing. So, this is the non-living thing part. Achha. The only thing which is non-living as far as life on this earth is concerned is actually one thing and that is viruses. Besides viruses, everything is a living thing. In fact, the other word which is used for viruses is that they are A. A means, a means absent. A is cellular. Viruses are not cells. Not they are cells. not considered to be cells, right? So viruses are living things, right? No, they are not. Okay. Uh, they are not, but they are, they are, you know, really weird things. They are not, but, and they can't even live independently. They can't grow. They can't reproduce. They can't breathe. They can't respire. They can't metabolize, excrete, anything. But once they enter your body and they get uh, like attachment to any cell of your body. They can just attach to a cell of your body and somehow they can destroy your cell. They can, you know, use some parts of your cell to make copies of themselves, just like photocopies and then destroy your body. And the same is the case with COVID-19 and many other viruses. So it's really strange. It's a strange structure, a structure which is living and non-living at the same time. We call it acellular, but at the same time, hum viruses ko microorganism bhi kehte now when i use the word microorganism micro means small micro actually means small technically literally and organism means life so i am calling it a small life and at the same time i'm saying it's a cellular and i'm saying it's a, you know a dead structure it's not living so that's sort of an irony okay it's an ironic thing that viruses are living and non-living at the same time. Okay? Is this part understood? Yes, yes. Right? And then we move on to the living things. Give me a, like a fair idea about what could be those uh, basic fundamental principles on which I would be able to classify all living things at a very broader level. What could be those, those you know, features which I would be using to classify the living things. What are those uh, features? Miss, they grow, they metabolize, they respire. No. no, no, no. This is a very, very general feature. Come oh. down now. Um, I want to classify living things. Yes, I don't know then. I, I only know that you can classify living things like, okay, as far as I remember by these like life processes. Only life processes, not the physical features. Miss, I mean the not the way they and all of that. No, no. For example, what's common oh, between they have a dog eyes. and oh, achha, they have eyes, they have a nose. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. What's common between me and a dog? Miss, you tell me what's common. Eyes, huh? eyes, nose, hands, tongue, feet, but not a tail. Yeah. I don't bark. Yes. <laughs> and another thing, dogs are mammals. I'm also a mammal. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. They also there are have many. Huh, ma yeah. But the dog's teeth are very different from my teeth. Dogs are only carnivores, but I'm an omnivore. Yes. Right. So basically, animals are classified on the basis of similar features. Okay. Similar features and those features can be, in fact, I think I should go to my presentation. That will be a better thing to show you. Yes, also, I have um, a test on this, uh, the respiration chapter on Monday. So I'll be preparing for it. Um, so like, I just wanted to ask mm -hmm. you that um, for it, should I just like practice from the topical past papers? Like that will be enough, right? Or should I like do Even the same exams, Wale? I'm not sure. Right now, the uh, the question is not whether 
you should work with a past paper or you should not work with a past paper or which past paper right now your question should be different it should be how should i study you yeah. should actually open up your textbook read it thoroughly that's okay. the only way to study and then go to my notes okay once you are done with all that then you can just randomly you know do some practice you will not start your studying with practicing past papers are you getting yeah. my point yeah miss first i ah. need to learn the chapter then i need to do concepts if your concepts are correct everything will be fine if your concepts are wrong no matter you do 100 past papers you will still mess up yeah okay i'll just learn the right? chapter and then i'll do it yeah okay go through this which i have shared on my screen just read this Yes, I've read it. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. Now see, look at this slide. This um more anatomy comes under morphology, right? Yes. Yeah, Miss, I've read it. What did you understand by this slide? <clears throat> so, Miss, basically, they're saying that um classification of organisms can be done in two ways. Okay, Miss, I just want to ask you that um human beings are not called organisms, right? Of course, they're called they? organisms. Yeah, Miss, oh, organisms. Mi microorganisms and organisms. Organ. What is the meaning of an organism? Miss, an organism is a living thing, and a microorganism is like small life, a small living thing, like you know, bacteria and viruses and all of that. No, but what is an organism composed of? Um, cells. Only cells. Anything else? Um. I'm sorry. Look at this. And again, this is an individual of the microbial form. Oh, yes, I got it. So, do you think an organism has cells? It's basically when organs and systems are working together. to produce an independent living thing that's another thing my question is do you think an organism should have cells um of course yes, yes. should it have tissues yes and should it have organs yes and also an organ system exactly it, it should have everything look i'm just showing you a when we started a the class yeah mm -hmm. you told me that yes, yes. Uh, Uh, uh you know viruses aren't living things because mm -hmm. um you said now that they like non living things which take over your cells and then become living things so like if i'm asked a question are they living things or not so like what am i supposed to say about viruses about yeah. viruses to you you know viruses is a separate topic in the same chapter that we are doing us with i'll give you lots of details now miss you so you, just... you wrote something in the start of the class on like a sheet so can they, you can go to that and you can see no 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 i can see from that i know that but for viruses your question is with what will i write so to write that down you have to study viruses in detail with me and that is actually a part of the chapter only are you getting my point we haven't okay. reached that part ha okay. uh, i don't want to go into the details of viruses i just told you i just touched upon viruses to give you an idea about what kind of uh, how can i divide everything on this earth so i would say i would divide everything on the earth into cellular and acellular things so cellular things include everything everything yeah starting from a bacterium to a, a house fly to a mosquito to a uh, what do you say cat and dog and tiger and lion and human being and plants okay. theek hai okay. but 
on the acellular side which means the side which has no cells you will say viruses are the only acellular things theek hai okay, okay, how are you going to how are you going to prove your argument ke ye acellular bhi hai aur ye living ki tarah bhi behave karta hai we'll do the details afterwards right so what i was trying to show you was actually your concepts about cells tissues organs and systems are very weak this is, i have noticed look here i am encircling a single cell right now okay this is a group of cells which makes it a tissue a group yeah. of tissues will make an organ and, and I... different organs together will make up a system Or this... yeah okay so when we move from cells to tissues to organs to system it means i am moving from something which is very small to something which is consistently increasing in size finally to a system aur agar bahut sare systems ek kisi insaan mein ek kisi janwar mein jama ho so then that person or that entity becomes an organism this human being is an organism because kyun because it has many systems working together like for example a digestive system a respiratory system a nervous system theek hai aur bachche samajhte hain ki bahut badi badi cheeze organisms hoti hain okay zaruri nahi ki har badi cheez organism ho that is why the slide that i showed you usme maine kya likha hai ke an organism can be as small as an ant or an amoeba or a bacteria और यीस्ट जो आपने टाइनी से यीस्ट किया था ना एनरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन में किया था यीस्ट जो आप पिज्जा में डालते हैं दैट्स आल्सो एन ऑर्गेनिज्म ठीक है एंड अ फंगस इज आल्सो एन ऑर्गेनिज्म अ फिश इज आल्सो एन ऑर्गेनिज्म अ ट्री इज एन ऑर्गेनिज्म अ लायन इज एन ऑर्गेनिज्म अ ह्यूमन इज एन ऑर्गेनिज्म किसी भी चीज के बारे में ये आपको फैसला करना है कि ऑर्गेनिज्म है या नहीं है यू शुड यू द फर्स्ट थॉट दैट शुड कम इनटू योर माइंड इट माइंड इज कैन इट लिव इंडिपेंडेंटली If your answer is yes, then that's an organism. ठीक है? And usually organisms are combinations of various various systems acting together. लेकिन ये definition amoeba पे apply नहीं होती और bacteria पे भी और yeast पे भी इसलिए कि they are so so tiny. They are tiny, लेकिन हम उसको organism इसलिए कहते हैं कि they can live independently. Are you getting my point? Yeah, so basically they don't have organs and organ systems and you know all of that in which is there in humans, but they can live independently, right? Yeah. Okay. Then, then we again go back to where we were, and we were actually doing classification. So we were here. Yes, and you were explaining me this thing. So yes, start your explanation once again. Miss, basically, um, you said uh, in this thing, um, classification of organisms can be done in two ways. So basically, um, we can look at the functions and we can look at the structure. So basically, a morphology, the structure, and then um, anatomy comes under it. Like okay, microscopic or macroscopic, and then after that, we can see the functions which are like physiology, like behavior, reproduction. chemical reactions in the way of movement hmm so the actually the technical word for structure is morphology and yeah. the technical word your medical word for function is physiology right or morphology ke andar aap you can call it morphology or you can call it anatomy you can see something with your own eyes and you can also see something by using a microscope yeah so if you're using your own eyes that's a macroscopic picture and if you're using a microscope of course it's a microscopic picture as far as the physiology is concerned the way anybody reproduces is its physiology the way anybody is behaving is its you know psychological physiology all the different chemical reactions jo aapne respiration mein padhe hain aerobic hai anaerobic hai ye hai wo hai this is also physiology because chemical reactions are also physiology the way a person moves the way an animal hunts it moves from place to place it colonizes different habitats that's also its physiology why because ek fish jo hai wo apna prey dhoondne ke liye swim karegi so that's the physiology or the way of movement of fish a bird yeah. will fly a tiger will run a human being will also run or walk or whatever 
right? So everybody is doing their, you know, is actually living their lives according to the different kinds of features that it possesses. Is that clear? Yes, miss. Now, this is somewhat thoda complicated, lag raha hai, but you will read it yourself. I will ask you how much you understood and then we will have a discussion. So, the first uh, sort of uh, important subtopic of this chapter is binomial classification. Okay? So, what is binomial classification? You read it and then we'll discuss. Miss, I've read it. Okay. Yes. What do you understand by this? What do so you mean by binomial classification? Um, miss, like different ways of classifying the same thing. Nain, by what is the binomial in all this discussion? What is binomial? Um, by means two and nomial means names. So two names wali baat is puri discussion mein kaha hai? The money plant wala thing is also known as devil's ivy. Okay, so, so so isn't money plant and devil's eye a very nice name? Yeah. Why do we want to replace it with the name Epi, Primnum, Aurium? Why don't I just simply say money plant? Yes. Um, yeah, miss, so for like this is like a you know, like people, so basically, um. Science is divided into two parts, right? Like botany and the the human thing we're um studying. So um basically the botanical name, like the one that is used for scientists to study, is the name of is the name Epipremium. Yeah, Epipremium aureum. But what's the advantage? Mm, miss the advantage is written right in front of you. Read this one second. This means yeah. you, huh, you haven't read it properly. I read it again. Okay, miss. So basically, um, it, over here it's written the money plant and devil's eye like a, a scientist in Sweden is calling it this and the other scientist in China is calling it this but the one name like it's which um is known like internationally like for example let's just take the example of SI units so they like um they're the same worldwide right so like there's no confusion or anything so the name of this plant is um epi prem premnum uh, aureum so that everyone can you know know it by the same name so there are no exactly like, yeah. uh, no confusion for example i am a scientist in sweden and the other scientist in china so yeah. i would say money plant so he would say what money plant the other one will say devil's eye so we all have to be on the same page right so that's yeah. why we should use scientific units and you you very well 
mentioned the example of an SI unit. So what is kg for you should be kilogram for the scientists in Norway, right? There yeah. should be a standard kilogram, milligram, whatever. So similarly, we have to standardize things. When we have to standardize things, we also have to standardize the biological name of all different organisms. So the name is binomial. And by binomial, I mean, there are two components to the name. Acha. Kya two components? The first name always starts with a capital letter. And the second name starts with a small letter. The first name denotes the genus. And the second name denotes the species. So what is a genus and what is a species? Some details are given on this slide now. So read this and then we move on to the next one. First read this. Thomas, over the, you're saying first name and second name now, but like doesn't uh -huh. it like epi, per premium, and then orium? So aren't it like, isn't it like three things? So epi will be the No, no, no. Achha. No, no, no. Achha. It's not like that. It's actually first name is epi premium. And the second name is, uh, let me go back. The first name is epi premium. And the second name is Orium. Orium, yeah, I got it. Okay. Actually, you know, I shouldn't have made a space between Epi and Premnum, so I should remove this space. Yeah. Hmm. That is actually confusing you. It's better now. Right? So it's one name. Now read this. After you've done reading this now, uh, then I will end the meeting and then I'll restart it again. Okay. In fact, I still have uh, three to four minutes, so I'll complete this part and then I will end the meeting. I'll yeah, let you know when I have to end. We can do it around. So we have like eight minutes. Uh -huh. More than that. Name of the genus is the generic name, uh, the first name, right? Which always begins with a capital letter. Yes. The second name is known as the species name or the specific name. Mm. It always begins with a small letter. Small letter. For example, uh, the example is these days because of rains and floods, um, cholera is very common. So cholera is caused by a bacterium whose name is Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio is its generic name. Cholerae is its specific um, name specific name yeah the species huh. and for example i've just given the example of a boy whose name is muhammad hamza khan so muhammad hamza is the generic name and khan is the surname so muhammad hamza ki bhi ek reason hai ki wo uska apna naam hai khan uska apna family name hai right so miss so basically the um species name is the family name right hmm, they won't say family but Okay, family yeah. hum either isliye nahi use karenge because family jo hai na uh, it's actually another the name of another hierarchy in the classification of organisms so i'm not using the word family over here because family hum phir apni family samajhte hain na animals ki family alag hoti hai <clears throat> right so right now don't use the word family you say vibrio is the generic name theek hai cholerae is the specific name the species name as yeah. we move forward, it will become more clear to us. Vibrio is the generic name, or it's the, it's the name of the genus, and species is the uh, uh, cholera is a species name, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the that when Vibrio comes, its name is the the name Vibrio actually means literally. What does it mean? Literally, it means organisms which are spiral. Okay, spiral. Achha, now this bacterium which causes cholera. Is spiral in shape. They can all be both side bacterium, they can just spiral, they can be called an Are you getting my point? Right? So no, I'm giving think. it the name Vibrio or Vibrio because it's spiral in shape. But I have to give it another name which is Cholerae because it is that spiral shaped bacterium which causes cholera. Not every spiral shaped bacterium causes cholera. There is another spiral shaped bacterium that causes syphilis. So, I have to make something to make it right. So, now I say, okay, now who causes cholera? So, I will say, Vibrio cholerae causes cholera. Okay? Uh, moving yes. on to 
moving on to the concept of species uh, i think i'm not starting species i will just end the class and then i will restart it again to give you a new concept right so i'm ending and then you rejoin 